All right. Let's take a look at some examples of rational functions. So on 28, we're trying to find the vertical asymptotes of the following function, x plus 3 all over x minus 2. So we have to remember what part of this formula tells us about vertical asymptotes. Well, the numerator, when the numerator is 0, that tells us about x-intercepts. And when the denominator is 0, that's what tells us about horizontal, or excuse me, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is equal to 0. So we set the denominator, x minus 2, equal to 0, and solve. So add 2 to both sides, and we see that the vertical asymptote for this function is the line x equals 2. And that's all there is to this. Just taking this kind of one piece at a time. Let's take a look at 30, where we're given g of x to be the following function. Uh, parentheses 2x minus 1 times parentheses x plus 2. And then all of that is over, setting atop of 2x plus 3. and times 3x minus 4. So, if we're looking for vertical asymptotes, which we are, then we're going to set the denominator equal to 0. That's going to tell us exactly what the vertical asymptotes are. So we're going to set 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 4 equal to 0. But in this case, we've got a product of two things being 0. And whenever we have a product of two numbers being 0, one of the two numbers has to be 0. So it's either the case that 2x plus 3 is 0 or 3x minus 4 is 0. So, on the first equation, we'll subtract 3 and then divide by 2. So we have 2x equals minus 3, then dividing by 2, we get x equals minus 3 halves. That's going to be one vertical asymptote. Then, on the second equation, by adding 4 to both sides, and then dividing by 3, we get x equals 4 thirds. And these two turn out to be our vertical asymptotes. So you may notice that vertical asymptotes always take the form of x equals some number. And that's what makes them vertical, because whenever you have x equals a number, and you graph that, that's just a vertical line. Let's take a look at 32 as well. On 32, we have h of x being defined as x squared minus 4 over 3x squared plus x minus 4. Now, looking for vertical asymptotes, we're going to start by setting the denominator equal to 0, because that's where vertical asymptotes occur. So we're going to set 3x squared plus x minus 4 equal to 0. And I see numbers, I see x squared, I see an x by itself, so I must have a quadratic. 
everything's already to one side. So let me see if this factors. I'm going to do 3 times minus 4, that's minus 12. And can I get factors of minus 12 which add to a plus 1? Well, how about a plus 4 and a minus 3? Because when I add those up, that'll give me a plus 1, which is what I need for the coefficient of x. And when I multiply them together, they are two factors of minus 12. So I'm going to write it out as 3x squared plus 4x minus 3x and then minus 4. And now I look at the first two and last two and factor out what's in common. In the first two, it uh, looks like there's just an x that's in common with both terms. So factoring an x out leaves me with 3x plus 4. In these next two, they both have negatives. So let's factor out a negative, and what's left over will be 3x plus 4, which is nice, because now the things in parentheses are equal and we can factor them out of these two terms. So pulling 3x plus 4 out leaves me with x in the first term and just a minus 1, a placeholder, the 1 as a placeholder, for the second term. So now we're back to where we were on 30. We've got a product of two things being equal to zero. So we're going to set each factor equal to zero because this is the only way two numbers ever multiply together to get zero is if one of those two numbers we started with was zero. So in this case we're going to get 3x is minus 4 which means x is minus 4 thirds and then in the second equation, that's simple enough, it's just going to be x equals 1. And these two will end up being the vertical asymptotes for this function. x equals minus 4 thirds and x equals 1. 